What's going on YouTube? GS now right here. So in today's video we have some news for those of you waiting for the iOS 11.2 up to iOS 11.2.6 jailbreak. But we're going to also recap the current situation with the released vulnerabilities and what can be done for the moment and what's going on because a lot of vulnerabilities have been released in the past couple of days and some of you are confused on what is going on. So let's start with Derek's vulnerability. If you remember, Derek said a couple days ago, in fact more than a week ago by now, that he would need to wait 90 days before he can disclose his vulnerability, CVE 2018-4143, which is a kernel vulnerability for iOS 11.2.6 and lower. So he pretty much needs to wait 90 days, but apparently he might not need to do that. Uh, Sparky, the developer behind the Meridian jailbreak, talked with Derek on Twitter via private messages and apparently somebody told Derek that he has to wait for that, but it might not be the case and if it's not, Derek said that he will release as fast as possible. Now, according to Google Project Zero, you either need to wait 90 days or you have to wait until a patch is broadly available for those who are affected by the bug. And in his case, iOS 11.3 does provide the patch for the kernel vulnerability, so he might be able to release it. It's not known for the moment, but he said he will look into it, and if it's the case, he will release as fast as possible, which is something great. I'm really happy to hear that. We might not need to wait 90 days after all. Anyways, moving on, I'm going to talk about the current vulnerabilities that are available for the iOS 11.2 up to iOS 11.2.6, so that you can understand in which situation we are for the moment. Now, at first, there is this vulnerability by Derek that will be released. It's currently not publicly available, but the vulnerability exists and it's a kernel vulnerability, which is definitely something very important. It might as well be what it takes to be able to start building a jailbreak. Then we move on to the WebKit vulnerability in here that Google Project Zero made available just a couple days ago and it's also been patched in iOS 11.3. Keep in mind that all vulnerabilities I'm talking about in here have been patched in iOS 11.3. This means that iOS 11.2.6 and lower are affected and if you update to iOS 11.3, you will not be able to use any of them in a jailbreak, which is pretty bad. Now this particular vulnerability in here is for WebKit, which means Safari and any other component that loads web pages using the WebKit component. Now you will be able to pretty much uh, create some memory corruption using the WebKit vulnerability in here, uh, disclosed by Google Project Zero, and it might come in handy if somebody wants to build a jailbreak that is being kickstarted from Safari. This happened in the past, especially on iOS 9 and even older versions, so it's not something out of the ordinary, but it still needs a lot of exploitation in order to come through. So for the moment, it's just a vulnerability with a proof of concept. Whether the developers will use it or not, it's up to them. Then of course we have this kernel vulnerability, which is completely different compared to Derek's, and this one pretty much is the one that leaks the um, kernel pointer in the x80 register. This is very important as well. As I said in my previous videos, this helps you to pretty much defeat the KASLR, which is a very important security component of the kernel. Once you're able to defeat that, you know where the kernel is in the memory. It's no longer being able to randomize itself and to hide itself from the attacker. And therefore, you are pretty much able to start poking into it. And you know, you know where it is, you're no longer flying blind. And this is a very important vulnerability and it has a write-up in here, it has the code available for those who are interested. So this is pretty much a complete vulnerability waiting to be exploited, which is something very good. But again, this is only applying for 11.2 up to iOS 11.2.6. It might work on older versions, but we do not care because older versions are already jailbroken. But anyways, iOS 11.2 up to iOS 11.2.6 can benefit on this vulnerability, which is something great, do not update to 11.3. Then we have this one that many people forgot about because it's a little bit older, it's from back in February, but it's still very useful. It's a sandbox escape by misleading the Bluetooth daemon. CVE 2018-4087 has been released by Zimperium, by Rani Iden from Zimperium, and is actually pretty, pretty powerful. And according to Sparky, this might
might be useful for something like Houdini, if you remember that thing. It was like some sort of semi-jailbreak that doesn't require as many exploits, but it's still able to modify the system somehow. Then you can check it out in here. He says, quote, why has no one done anything with that Bluetooth daemon exploit on 11.2? It literally gives you Mac port to processes running as root. Now he says, quote, in before Houdini update, wink, wink. Well, according to him, it might be useful for Houdini, but Saigusa stepped in and said that there is still a lot of work to be done in order to make a Houdini update for the iOS 11.2 based on this. You still have to find a lot of uh, good ROP gadgets and it's not an easy task, but the vulnerability is there and it's better than having nothing. So we have vulnerabilities, we have something to, you know, to poke into, to try. Uh, for the moment, this is a very good thing compared to iOS 11.3 that is completely sterile for the moment. The iOS 11.3 does have vulnerabilities, but they are zero days for the moment. And if you remember, MeanSpark Zen has actually said that he has a kernel vulnerability for the iOS 11.3 that has survived from, you know, iOS 11.2.6 and so on. So iOS 11.3 is not completely safe either, but it doesn't have publicly available vulnerabilities like iOS 11.2.6 and lower has. So it's a better option to stay on 11.2.6 or lower. Now, now, for those of you who do not know, 11.2.6 is no longer signed since a couple days ago. Therefore, iOS 11.3 is the only version that we can restore to for the moment. So do not restore to 11.3 because you wouldn't be able to go back to 11.2.6. I got some questions from people whether they can use the iOS 11.2.6 SHSH2 blobs in order to go back to the 11.2.6 um, from 11.3. Unfortunately for the moment it's impossible because you're not able to set the nonce generator into the NVRAM. So if you can't patch the NVRAM you cannot use the um, SHSH2 blobs that you have saved. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to stay updated for more info. I really hope this video cleared that up. Um, there are vulnerabilities for the iOS 11.2 up to iOS 11.2.6 and they're definitely useful for jailbreaking. I'm gonna keep you updated with anything that's going on in this jailbreak community so do not forget to subscribe to stay updated. I'm Gio Snow. Peace out.